Hello everyone and welcome to another random bits and pieces segment from my brain and today sit a while for we are playing some more franchise Aki manager 7 with my Tampa Bay lightning historical challenge All right so as it is now a uh, pretty much tradition uh, the Tampa Bay lightning started a season pretty slow um, we're not exactly world beaters on paper to start with and we kind of had a up and down start to this season uh, so my strategy to get a head coach to take care of the team instead of me has not been paying off exactly uh, right now so hopefully uh, we're gonna turn things around here uh, in november uh, there is nothing on the trade block that is interesting me at the moment. Uh, plus, usually I don't really look to make a trade that early in the season. I, especially with uh, our team here, we have uh, shown in the past that we have a tendency to turn things around as the season goes along. Uh, so I'm definitely going to uh, reevaluate after November. Looks like it's going to be a fairly busy month. Uh, so hopefully we have a little bit of a better idea of who we are uh, after this month here. Uh, we are 10th in the east so not good enough and we still have steve richen that's hurt for probably until january or so uh, so sadly he is hurt i was hoping for a breakout season by him as i mentioned before but the game had other plans for me all right so uh, we are fresh out a 1-1 tie against the flyers that happen uh, during the 2d game and we are going to go ahead and start november pretty much right now so let's go ahead and sim one day here we're gonna be set for our first game in november Alright, so Dave Manson is suspended in Edmonton. He's going to miss six games. Memorable game for Larry Murphy, who had four assists against the Capitals. And Takeshi Okubo, the team owner, is satisfied with my work, but we're not doing all that great, so I don't know what he's satisfied about. Okay, so we are going to be in New Jersey to play against the Devils. Devils are not doing good at all. They are 3 and 7. That's good for dead last in the East. And we are 1 and 0 oh against the Devils so far this season. So hopefully we can beat them to start the month and start on the good uh on a good note here and as usual, of course, go Lightning go. All right. We are going to have Nikolai Abibolin in net. They are going to go with Martin Brother. All right, so we start with a win. So we won 5-3. So pretty good game here to start. Uh, oh, God, yeah, we... Uh, uh, we outshot them 41 to 13 so not a good game by Abibulin at all but hey uh, we won the game so at this point that's what matters for us uh, Mikael Anderson was the first star of the game he had two goals and an assist Jeff Friesen was the second star with a goal and Brian Bradley was the third star with two assists So Devils open up the scoring in the first period, and then Mikael Anderson scored on the power plate from Alexander Karpovsev and Alexander McGillney. It was tied at one year after one. And nobody scored in the second period. And then quite a bit of scoring in the third. So we had Alexander McGillney score from Mikael Anderson and Brian Bradley. Then the Devils scored twice to take a 3-2 lead. But then after that, we scored three on insert. Len Barry scored from Valery Bury and Mike Greer. Robert Zvela from Bill Guerin and German Titov. And Mikael Anderson from Brian Bradley and Bobby Alec. And it was a 5-3 win. Yeah, we need a uh, we need contribution from our second line. That's the reason why we are not uh, in a good spot here is because we had like absolutely zero production from our second line. So we need definitely a lot better from them. 
Uh, Dave Andre Chuck extends his goal streak to five games with a goal against the Colorado Avalanche. And those guys are starting to get more comfortable. And then we're going to be on the road again uh, as we go and face the Rangers at Madison Square Garden. Uh, Rangers are 9, 5, and 1. That's good for second in the East. And we are 0 and 1 against the Rangers this season. So hopefully we can turn things around here. All right. Oh, so we are sending Jeff Hackett in net for this game, and Mike Richter is going to be in net for the Rangers. And we lost 4-2 to at Madison Square Garden. Uh, oh, God, we didn't play a very good game. We were we allowed 50 shots on goal, so we were outshot 50-23. to Darren Turcott was the first star of the game. He had three assists. Brian Bradley was the second star with a goal and an assist. And Jeff Courtnall was the third star with two assists. So Rangers took... Uh, one nothing lead here in the first period, and then Alexander McGillney tied the game on the power play from Brian Bradley and Mikael Anderson. We were tied at one after one. Then Rangers scored again in the second period, and then we tied again. Brian Bradley scored on the power play from Mark Bergeron. We were tied at two after two, so everything looked fine then, despite the shot, the shots probably, and then the Rangers scored twice in the third period, and we lost 4-2. Oh, Brian Leach is suspended. I saw that he had a hit to the head. So Brian Leach is going to miss two games with a suspension for playing dirty against us. All right, so we have one day off, and then we are going to host the Washington Capitals. All right, so Washington is three and nine, which is good for twelfth in the East. We are one and zero against Washington. We beat them four nothing in the first month of play. Uh, hopefully, we can uh, turn things around here. We can't afford another long losing streak here. All right, so Olaf Kozig is going to be in net for Washington. We're going to go back to Nikolai Abibolin for that one. Come on, guys. Oh yeah, we won nine to three. There you go. All right, so we outshot uh, Washington thirty-two to fourteen. Alexander McGillney was the first star of the game. He had two goals and two assists. Brian Bradley was the second star with two goals and two assists as well. And Mikael Anderson was the third star with a goal and three assists. Fifteen thousand one hundred and sixteen people. Definitely got a good bang for their buck as they were in the stands for this game. The Alexander Karpovsev opened up the scoring in the first from Dave Barr, and then Aaron Gavey from Vidi Peltanen and Jason Allison. Then Mikael Anderson from Brian Bradley and Alexander McGillney. It was 3 0 at that point, and then uh, Washington did score a goal. It was 3 1 Tampa Bay after one. Then in the second period, we scored four unanswered goals. Uh, Brian Bradley scored his fifth from Alexander McGillney and Mikael Anderson. Then McGillney from Bradley and Anderson. Bradley scored from German Titov and Boris Mironov. And then Alexander McGillney scored his tenth from Mikael Anderson and Boris Mironov. It was 7-1 at that point. Washington scored twice before the end of the period, so it was a 7-3 lead for the Lightning at that point. Then finally in the third period, Bill Guerin scored from Aaron Gavin and Len Barry and then Sean Chambers scored on the power play from Boris Mironov and Bill Guerin and it was a 9-3 victory all right well I like statement games like that Uh, Darren McCarthy has a great game uh, for the Waiters he had a hat trick against Boston pretty good Oof Samuelson is suspended in Pittsburgh he's going to miss a game there was no stopping Mario Lemieux in that same game. He had three goals and three assists against Edmonton. And Larry Murphy in that same game had a goal and four assists. Uh, Adam Foote 
is hurt with a torn flexor tendon and he is out for three months. All right, so it's gonna hurt the avalanche here. Adam Foot was uh, one of the really good defensive defensemen of that era for sure. And in that same game, Joe Sekic uh, scored his 300th goal in his career, got a goal and two assists against San Jose. Joe Sekic is 27 and he is still a five-star player. All right, so we have a day off, and then we are going to host the Pittsburgh Penguins. That one is going to be a little tough, probably. Right, so Pavel Patera is available on waivers, as is Alex Hicks. I'm not picking them up. Bernie Nichols played in his thousand game in his career. Uh, that was against Boston. Didn't get a point. So Bernie Nichols, 35 years old, still a three-star player. Suspension over for Steve Connell chat back in the lineup over there in Washington. And Wayne Gretzky got to 2,700 points in his career with a goal and an assist against the Montreal Canadiens. Wayne Gretzky is 35 and he is still a five-star player. Okay, all right, so Pittsburgh is in town. They are 10 and 3. That's good for second in the East. And we are 0 and 1 against Pittsburgh. If I'm not mistaken, that was the first game of the season. We dropped it 8 to 2. So hopefully a better showing this time. But it's still going to be a tough game. Pittsburgh has so many weapons. So Pittsburgh's going with Ron Tugnut. We are going back with Nikolai Abibulin. And we won. Oh, maybe a little bit of a surprise win here. Tampa Bay won 3-1 here at home against Pittsburgh. We can say thank you to Nikolai Bibulin for that one. Uh, we were outshot 45-22. to 22. Uh, Alexander McGillney was the first star of the game. He had a goal and two assists. Jason York was the second star with an assist. And Nikolai Bibulin, third star, 44 saves. 16,957 people in attendance for the game. So McGillney opened up the scoring in the first period. That was a power play goal from Mikael Anderson and Brian Bradley. And it was a 1-0 Tampa, Tampa Bay lead here after one. Sorry. Then in the second period, Pittsburgh tied the game. And then Brian Bradley scored from Robert Zvela and Alexander McGillney. And then Brian Bradley on the power play from Alexander McGillney. 3-1 Tampa Bay after two. We had a fight between Len Barry and Bob Airy. Nobody scored in the third. So we won this 3-1. Awesome. Not awesome is that Brian Bradley got injured in this game. Hopefully not for too long. Uh, we're already without um, Steve Ruchin for a while. Oh, he's day to day. Okay, one to two weeks. All right. Uh, what's uh, a, a tender shoulder? Okay. And Ulf Samuelson is back in the lineup after serving his suspension. All right. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and put. Uh, Bradley on the injured reserve that's fine one to two weeks we're just gonna have to to do without all right so what do we have here so we have Brent Gretzky yeah I don't think so Let's recall Maxim Sushinsky. Not sure that he's even gonna play much, but uh, nah, that's my recall there. Okay, all right. Big game for Joe Murphy. He had a hat trick against Toronto, pretty good. And then Brian Leach is back from suspension. Alright, so we are going to be playing in Detroit, so we have a three-game uh, 
road trip here that starts in Detroit. So Detroit is 11, 5, and 1. That's pretty good. Uh, they are without Patrick Hewlin and Jamie Pusher. They are not going to be in the lineup. They are hurt. All right, so Byron Defoe and Vincent Riendo in net. And then we have Finley, Lind Lidstrom, Resen, Chiasson, Konstantinov, Skopinsev on D. Kozlov, Probert, Isobart, Fedorov, Primo, Selinger, Isaman, Cesarelli, Craig, Drake, Green, Lapointe, Shepard, and Vaivoda up front. Um, yeah, this is going to be a tough game. We just beat Pittsburgh, so so maybe we're gonna feel better. Maybe we're gonna feel pretty good about ourselves here and get in Detroit and steal the game. All right, so if we do so, it's gonna be without our number one center, so. All right, so Jason Allison, who has like one point this season, is now centering the top line. I'm not sure how that's gonna go. All right, Nikolai Abibulin in net for us. Byron Defoe in net for the Wings. Oh, 5-2 victory for the Lightning. And now we officially play for 500. So that's what I was saying at the start of the video. It seems like my teams always start with a really crappy uh, month of October. And then we kind of turn things around as the season goes. I'm not sure why. Maybe we just are not prepared to play. That's, that's on the coach, which means that Prior to this season, it was on me. I was the cause of that. But now I can blame John Muckler. I have somebody else that I can blame, which is the beauty of being a GM. You can blame others for the mistakes that you make. Isn't that beautiful? All right, and it's true in most uh, spheres of work in life, sadly. Uh, very few people are accountable, accountable for their own mistakes. It's always easier to blame others, especially people that are under you. All right, so not to paint too uh, too much of a negative uh, light on the world, but uh, you know, it's I guess it's called self-preservation or something. Anyway, all right, so we outshot Detroit 38 to 32. Alexander McGillney was the first star of the game with three assists. Jason Allison was the second star with two goals and an assist, and Mikael Anderson was the third star with a goal and an assist. Oh yeah. So Jason Allison opened up the scoring in the first from Robert Zvela and Alexander McGillney, and we were up 1-0 after 1. Then Robert Zvela scored in the second period from Mark Bergeron and German Titov. Then Bobby Alik from Boris Mironov and Mikhail Anderson. It was 3-0. Uh, Detroit scored, made it 3-1. Then Mikhail Anderson scored from Alexander McGillney and Jason Allison. It was 4-1. And then Detroit scored again, so it was 4-2 after 2. Then finally, in the third period, Jason Allison scored on the power play from Boris Mironov and Alexander McGillney, and we won this game in Detroit fair and square 5-2. Pretty impressive. And Dave Barr got hurt in that game, so I'm going to put him on the injured reserve. Wow. Okay. Right, so I was hesitating before between Jeff Toms and um, Sushinsky, so I guess Jeff Toms gets uh, at least an NHL paycheck. I don't know that he's going to play, but uh, that's going to be an NHL paycheck for him. Um, all right, so we have a few days off here before we play in St. Louis against the Blues. Uh, Trevor Linden extends his assist streak to eight games with a goal and, and an assist against the Rangers. And then Paul Carrier signed a two-year extension with the Panthers. So he's going to make $1.48 million a year during those two years. All right. Uh, Claude Lemieux is suspended in New Jersey. He's going to miss six games. And there was no stopping Yarmir Jagger. He had four goals against Buffalo. And Mario Lemieux in that same game had four assists. Most of them probably acquired on the Jagger goals, if not all of them.
All right, Dave Gagne reached 300 goals in his career. Um, got a goal against Calgary. So Dave Gagne is 31, and he is still a four-star player. Steve Thomas is suspended with the Islanders. He's going to miss eight games. Trevor Linden's assist streak ended at eight games uh, in that same game. Uh, didn't get a point against the Islanders. Mark Ricky extends his goal streak to five games. Uh, he had a goal and an assist against the Rangers. Gary Galley is back from suspension for the Flyers. Back in the lineup over there. Dave Manson is also back from suspension for the Orders. Okay, uh, Brian Bradley suffered a, um, a finger injury during practice, but he was already hurt. So is it like in uh, the baseball game? So in the baseball game, your players can get two different uh, injuries at the same time that uh, kind of pile up on top of each other. I don't know if it's the case for... No. So it uh, replaced the other injury, I guess. So now we have like a bruised finger and we are day to day for Brian Bradley. But anyway. All right, so we are in St. Louis to play against the Blues. Uh, the Blues are 7, 8, and 2. And we have not played the Blues this season, so let's see what they have in store for us here. Oh, quite a few injuries. So Jeff Brown, Mark I, oh, all Demon too. So Jeff Brown, Mark I, Utsila, and Kresutkin are all hurt and not going to play this game. Alright, so the players that are going to face off are UC Markkanen in net, Curtis Joseph, Kyle McLaren, uh, Aaron Let I think it's Aaron Letang, Alan Letang, sorry, uh, Kevin Lowe, Stefan Quinta, Pukalovic, Christian Aflam on D. Yeah, that D is terrible with all those injuries. Use Krushelinski, Lowry, Shannon, Jenny, Korolev, Laperriere, Niemchinov, Taylor, Barnes, Emerson, Hull, Murray, Plevuka, and Afina Genov up front. So, yeah, I'm not, the D is not all that good with all those injuries. Goaltending should be good if they send Joseph, and the forwards are pretty good as well. Hopefully, we can exploit the defense here. All right, so Abby Boulin is in net for us, and we are going to face Curtis Joseph. And it's a tie. Uh, we have a few injuries of our own, so I'll, I guess I'll take the tie, uh, even though we got, probably got robbed a point by Joseph there. So it's a 1-1 one, one tie. We outshot St. Louis 45 to 36. Uh, Kevin Lowe was the first star of the game. He had an assist. Len Berry was the second star with an assist as well. And Stu Barnes was the third star with a goal. So uh, St. Louis opened up the scoring in the first. And then in, in the second period, there was a fight between Brent Hughes and Len Berry. And then finally in the third period, German Titov scored shorthanded from Boris Mironov and Len Barry. Tied the game, and of course nobody scored in overtime, so we have a tie. Well, we're undefeated uh, on that road trip so far. Alright, so League says no suspension for Rob Zamuner in Buffalo. Michael Pekka is back from suspension in Vancouver. And Mark Ricky extends his goal streak to six games with a goal and two assists against the Washington Capitals. A strong night for Paul Carrier. He had a four-goal game against the Islanders. That's pretty good. Kirk Muller reaches 300 goals in his career. He got a goal and an assist against Washington. Kirk Muller is 30, and he is still a three-star player in Montreal. All right. And we are in New Jersey to play against the Devils. Devils are now 5, 10, and 1, and they are 11th in the East. They are not dead last anymore. Right, we are 2-0 against the Devils this season. 
little win here would be pretty neat. Uh, we're sending Abby Bolin in net, and then they are going with Martin Brother. And we won 3 to 2. All right, pretty tight game. Uh, shots were tied at 27 apiece. Face offs, pretty much. Yeah, that was a pretty tight game. Uh, pretty close in uh, most team categories there. So we had a hard time beating them a little bit, but we are without our number one and potentially number two centers right now. So, yeah. So Robert Zvela was the first star of the game. He had two assists. John McLean was the second star with an assist. And Jason Allison was the third star with a goal and an assist. So nobody scored in the first, although we did get a fight between Randy McKay and Len Barry. Then in the second period, New Jersey scored, so it was 1-0 New Jersey at, uh, after 2. Then in the third period, Alexander McGillney tied the game with a power play goal from Mikael Anderson and Jason Allison. Then Bobby Olick from Robert Zvela and Ryan Smith. And then Jason Allison from Robert Zvela and Mikael Anderson, 3-1 at that point. And then with 25 seconds left to go in the game, New Jersey reduced the lead to 1 with a goal, but they couldn't tie the game, so we won 3-2. Oh, Yanni Lockannon is day to day. All right, I'm not gonna mess with it. Yeah, it's just day to day and uh, no, uh, no injury time for you. Memorable game for Peter Forsberg. He had four assists against Hartford. Open ice leads to a productive night for Curtis Lessishin. Had four assists as well in that game against Hartford. Wow. Pretty rare offensive outburst for Curtis Lissishin. Uh, great night for Scott Young in that same game. He had a hat trick, three goals. Uh, Mark Bureau is suspended in Ottawa. He's going to miss one game. Excellent passing leads to Productive Night for Pat Verbeek, playing for Ottawa as well. He had four assists against the Islanders. And in that same game, Yashin had three goals and an assist. Then Mark Ricky scored in a seventh straight game with a goal against the Sharks. All right, so we have a couple more days before we host the Kings. Thomas Steen has completed a thousand games in his career, so he now plays for Florida. Thomas Steen does. Didn't get a point. Thomas Steen is 36 and a two star player. Dave Barr is ready for more drills, and Brian Bradley is also feeling better, so we might be getting those two back soon. Now the Kings are in town. Uh, they have a pretty decent record of 10, 6, and 3. We have not played the Kings so far this season. Let's see what they have here. All right, so they have one injury. Uh, Tony Granato is not going to play that game. He is hurt with a sore back. Uh, Kitty Rudy is in that. And uh, Yerki Tammy, Paul Coffey, Kasatanov, Zitnik, Blake, Adi, McSorley, uh, Shodin, and Sitter on D. And yeah, Adi uh, is a little old. <laughs> not, a, not a lot of young legs there playing uh, the back end for the Kings. Uh, they are talented, though. Uh, so that's not a problem, it's just uh, might have to look uh, a little bit for the future here. They're not all going to play for many more years. Uh, and then up front, Donnelly, Granato, Murray, Reichel, Tupal, Eliash, Kutsuri, Gretzky, Marsha, Barkov, Buri, Curry, and Sandstrom. So pretty decent team. Uh, overall, not a whole lot of weaknesses, maybe on the on at left wing, but Especially with Granato, that's hurt right now. But uh, yeah, that should be a pretty good challenge here. All right, so Yuka Temi is going to be... Uh, I think I said it was year, year key. It's Yuka, sorry. So Yuka Temi in net for the Kings. We are going to go with Nikolai Abibulin. And it's a 1-1 one -one tie. I, I guess I'll take it. Uh, pretty good team, so I don't mind so much t tying when it's a pretty decent team. Uh, we 
you know, shots were tied at 32 apiece again. So Bill Guerin was the first star with a game. He had an assist. Wayne Gretzky was the second star with a goal. And Bobby Eric was the third star with a goal as well. And 16,911 people came to see the Great One play. More than likely that was a reason why they were there. Well, not necessarily the reason why they were there, but let's just say that Wayne Gretzky uh, usually was drawing uh, crowds wherever he was playing. So some of them were there for that, for sure. So Bobby Alec opened up the scoring in the first from Ryan Smith and Bill Guerin. It was a one nothing Tampa Bay lead at that point. And then we have to wait all the way until almost the midway part of the third period to see the Kings tie the game. It was tied at one. Then there was a fight between Bill Guerin and Marty McSorley. And then uh, between Len Berry and Marty McSorley again. So McSorley was kind of busy. Uh, Mark Bureau is back from suspension in Ottawa. Dave Barr about to be back. Brian Bradley about to be back as well. And we have a few days off here before we play again. Joe Newendike lights the lamp. He had a hat trick against the Stars. Brian Bradley is back. That's good. And so is Yanni Lacanon. So, can I get Brian Bradley back? Oh, I have to wait one more day, which, I mean, that's fine. We don't play for a couple more. There we go. All right, so Andreas Johansson is available on waivers, and so is Joel Otto. I'm not going to get those guys. All right, so Bradley, you come back. Jeff Toms, you go back down. Oh, you did play two games for us. All right. All right, so Utila is on waivers, and Sergei Nyamshinov is also on waivers. Scott Stevens played in his thousandth game in his career, didn't get a point. And that was against Washington. Scott Stevens is 32 and he is still a three-star player. Right, and we are about to play the Philadelphia Flyers. All right, so uh, Flyers are 11, 7, and 4. That's good for third in the East. And, of course, we are 0-0-1 against them. And that was the 2D game was that 1-1 tie we had against them. It looks like this month the 2D game is going to be against the Hartford Waiters at home. All right, so Bradley put back on the first line, so that's good. So Flyers are going to send Dominique Roussel in net. We are going to go with Nikolai Abibulin. Oh, that's a nice win. 5-1. I like those. We outshot the Flyers 41 to 26. Yanni Lacanon was the first star of the game. He had two assists. Aaron Gailey was the second star with two assists as well. Maxim Sushinsky was the third star with two goals. So we had 16,143 people in attendance for the game. Mikael Anderson scored first in the first period. That was his fifth of the season from Alexander McGillney and Aaron Gailey. Then in the second period, Maxim Sushinsky scored from Yanni Lacanon and Aaron Gailey. And then Sushinsky again from Boris Mironov and Ryan Smith. We were up 3-0 after 2. In the third period, Bill Guerin scored from Alexander Karpovtsev and Yanni Lacanon. It was 4-0. Then the Flyers scored, made it 4-1. And then Boris Mironov scored, made it 5-1. And that was the end of the game. A nice 5-1 victory. So we're looking pretty good here. Now we have an injury. Boris Mironov is hurt. So, you know, we have to deal with that as well. Right. Uh, Aaron Gailey improves at left wing. Good for him. Uh, he's only day to day, so I'm not going to do anything with him. We're just going to push through. Ooh, do I, I have Sean O'Donnell as a spare, so... Not great, but it's going to have to do. 
Well, Sean O'Donnell was a decent defensive defenseman, but uh, Boris Mironov brings a decent shot and a little bit more offensive instincts that Sean O'Donnell is not going to bring, or at least he shouldn't. But who knows, maybe the, the game is going to give him, you know, plus two uh, slap shot or something. All right, Dave Andre Chuck keeps fans on their feet all night. He had a hat trick, three goals against Boston. Pretty good. Great night for Joe Murphy. He had four assists against the Flames. Red light stays on for Craig Wallanen uh, of the Panthers. He had a hat trick against the Blues. Wow, another former uh, Quebec Nordic defenseman that was mostly known for his defensive play with a little bit of a, an offensive output after uh, Curtis Lissachin earlier. Right, and Dave Barr is ready here to come. Oh, no, he's not quite ready. Probably going to be ready after the next click here. Oh, no, so not. Steve Smith is available on waivers. I don't think I'm going to get him. Uh, I kind of have similar players playing for me right now. Uh... All right, so we're going to be playing in Montreal against the Habs. They are 11, 8, and 4. That's good for fourth in the East. Uh, we have not played Montreal this season, so let's take a look at um, who they have. I'm sure my friend FJ is kind of uh, curious to see what the Habs have on their lineup. They do have Sean Hill. He's hurt, so he's not going to be playing. Uh, they have Patrick Wennett with Fadeyev as the backup. Lilo the line, Jamie Rivers, Matthew Schneider, Zabransky, J. Mickey, Petrus, Brice Boy, Eric Desjardins, and Sean Hill on D. Uh, there's a few holes in, in that D, that's for sure. Benoit Brunet, Vincent Anfous, which I still think it's a good jersey idea, so you might want to go for that. Uh, John Leclerc, Brian Savage, Neil Broughton, Guy Carboneau, Pelé Clon, Kirk Muller, Brian Bellows, Eric Dazi, Mike Keane, Oleg Petrov, and Selivanov that they stole from us in the waivers draft. Uh, he hasn't been that great for them. Seven points in 23 games. Alright, so decent team. A little bit of a a little bit of a struggle on D, I would say, but uh, other than that, it's a pretty decent team. Definitely not a, an automatic win for us. All right, so Nikolai Bibulin is going to be in net for us. Patrick Roy is going to be in net for the Habs. Uh, we lost 4 to 3 in overtime. Pain. Yes, I said it. Pain. All right, uh, we were outshot 34 to 90. Oh, we didn't have a good game there. Uh, Brian Bellows was the first star of the game. He had two goals. Mikael Anderson was the second star with two assists. And Kirk Muller was the third star with three assists. Um, we took a 2 nothing lead into the game. Alexander Karpovtsev scored from Sean Chambers and Mikael Anderson. Then Len Barry from Maxim Sushinsky and Valery Bury. It was a 2 nothing lead for Tampa Bay after one. Then in the second period, we had Yanni Lacanon give us a 3 0 lead from Mikael Anderson and Sean O'Donnell. And it was a 3 0 lead after two. But uh, we crumbled in the third period. Montreal scored three straight. And then Brian Bellows played the hero in overtime. And we lost uh, 4 3. And of course, we don't get a point for that. It is 1996. There is no points for losing in overtime. Right, so we dropped that one. All right, so now we're going to be hosting the Buffalo Sabres. All right, Dave Barr is ready to come back. Man. Aaron Broughton is available on waivers. I won't pick him up. All right, Miranov still can't play. God. I kind of don't want to send down a guy that has three points in four games. I think I'm going to send down Mike Greer instead. Go go work on your play a little bit more. Sushinsky outplayed, the, outplayed you during his stay with the team here. And we're going 
you know, get the veteran back in the lineup. I don't mind having a couple of veterans on the team. I think it helps balance things out. All right, so Buffalo is in town. They are 10, 9, and 3. That's good for 7th in the East. Actually, with a win here, we would catch up to them and the Islanders. We have lost the first game of the season against them 4 1. All right, so Buffalo's going with Alexei Yegorov against us. We are going with Abby Bullen. Oh, yeah, we won 6 0. That's what I'm talking about. 45 21, the shots for us. Robert Zvella was the first star of the game. He had a goal and two assists. Vili Peltonen was the second star with two assists. And Bobby Alik was the third star with two assists as well. 15,243 people in attendance for this game. Right, so Alexander McGillney scored in the first period from Robert Zvella and Mikhail Anderson. And then Alexander Karpovtsev scored on the power play from Brian Bradley and Mikhail Anderson. And then Sean Chambers from Vidi Peltonen and Robert Zvella. 3 nothing lead after one. Nobody scored in the second period. And then in the third period, Ryan Smith scored from Bill Guerin and Bobby Alik. Then German Sita from Bobby Alik and Mark Bergevin. And then... Robert Zvella from Vili Peltonen and Jason Allison, and it was a 6 nothing win. It was all Tampa Bay in that game. It's beautiful! Claude Lemieux is back from suspension in New Jersey. Uh, Doug Gilmore is hurt in Toronto. He's going to miss... He has a pinched nerve, but they don't say how long he's out for. Two to three weeks. Okay. And Jagger is sidelined with a day-to-day -day injury in Pittsburgh as well. All right. So there's only two games left here in November. So we're about to host the Dallas Stars. Uh, Dimitri Yuskevich in Calgary is suspended. He's going to miss one game. Boris Miranov is feeling better. All right, so we are about to play the Stars. They are 11, 8, and 4. We have not played them so far this season. Sean Donovan is not going to play the game for the Stars. He is hurt. Right, so, oh yeah, I think we played them in preseason or something. I remember those uh, goaltender John Casey and Klempa in net. That's not uh, too great. And then Dykaus, Johnson, Tinor D, Jacobson, Ninima, Acher, Madvichuk on D. Then Black, Ulf, Dallin, Gaetan, Shine, Lindsay, Perrin that they stole from us in the waivers draft. Oh, he's a two-star player now too. Great. Uh, Elik, Dave Gagne, Miller, Modano, Bilesma, Courtnall, Dackel, Klatt, and Lettinen. Yeah, Perrin has a respectable 7 points in 20 games this season. I mean, that's definitely not great or anything, but he's probably playing on the 3rd or 4th line, so that's respectable. All right, uh, Martin Klempa in net for Dallas. We are going with Nikolai Abibulin. Yeah, we lost 4-3. Oh, we, out, we outplayed them too. Not a great game. Uh, that one we lost. Uh, Abibulin lost that one for us for the most part. So former Tampa Bay Lightning Scott Pellerin was the first star of the game with a goal. Alexander McGillney was the second star with two assists. And Yeri Lettinen was the third star with two goals. We outshot Dallas 46-24 to and we lost 4-3. 17,021 people in attendance for the game. Ryan Smith opened up the scoring in the first period. That was his fifth of the season from Alexander Karpovtsev and Bobby Alik. Then the Stars tied the game. Then Mikael Anderson scored on the, on the power play from McGillney. Then the Stars tied the game again. So we were tied at 2 after 1. Then the Stars took a 3-2 to two lead into the second period. And we tied the game in the third from Brian Bradley with assist from Robert Zvella and Alexander McGillney. We were tied at 3, but then with uh, 3 uh, 316 left to go in the game, Yeri Lettinen scored on the power play. That was a game winner. We lost 4-3. Uh. All 
All right, so there was no stopping Scott Mellenby in Edmonton. He had four goals and an assist against the Sharks. Then the scouting update, which only has goaltenders and a couple of centers sprinkled in for the most part. Uh, Boris Mironov feeling better. And Sutter unleashes Tyred against media during the press conference. So San Jose Sharks head coach Brian Sutter wasn't happy with his team or the local media pressured for answers to better understand his team's performance. Sutter let go of all reason in a profanity laced tired to the media. His own team and anyone within earshot, you know, it doesn't help the situation when you people are shoving microphones down our throat. Okay, I've read that before. So Sutter not happy. Yeah, the Sharks are really not having a good season. Actually, they won two games this month uh, so far, so that's better than what they did last season, uh, last month month because they had not won a single game and I wonder how Anaheim is doing we're about to find out after the 2d game here all right so that's the last game of November that's gonna be the 2d game it's gonna be against the Hartford Waiters they are 9 12 and 1 that's good for 10th in the east uh, we have not played them so far this season like, so Mark Gregg is hurt probably not playing much this season if at all. Patrick Poulain is hurt as well, so he may not play. Uh, Shane Doan is hurt, not gonna play. Wow, okay, so they have a few injuries. Sean Burke and Chris Osgood in net, that's pretty good. Uh, Dan Kesmer, James Patrick, Eric Weinrich, Zardy Zalapski, Adam Burt, Doug Uda, Terodowski, Bartoloni on D. Okay. Craven, Connie Ward, Poulain, Ornskog, Petrovicki, Castles, Sanderson, Jansons, Don, Karpov, McCarthy, Sandy Moger, and Prochaska. Okay. Not a already great team. A few decent players, but yeah, it's uh, probably going to be tough for Hartford this season. Alright, so Chris Osgood is going to be a net for Hartford. We are going to go with Jeff Hackett for this game. Hackett gets a rare game. And this is our 2D game. So let's go here. Alright, so that's still going here. Alright, I'm uh, going to go ahead and start that. And actually, before I do that, I'm going to pause the video real quick and I will be right back. All right, and we are back. So let's get this thing going here. We are in black. So go little squares, go. Icing. Not a whole lot of pace for the start of the game here. Another icing. Oh. Alright, go get me a goal. Oh, that's Ryan Smith. At least it should be, number 94. Oh, we dumped it in, couldn't get it back. Alright, I can toss the puck on the side. Yeah, we need a good game from uh, Aket. He didn't get to play much this season, so you always need for your backup to, uh, you know, to not suck too much. All right, so Yanni Lacanon took a holding penalty, so we are we have to kill a uh, penalty here. So 11:57 left to go in the first period. Hartford's going on the power play. And 
it's a it, it's a shorty by Brian Bradley from Mark Bergevin and Sean O'Donnell. All right, so short and it go for Brian Bradley. We'll take it, of course, and we are up one nothing here in the first period with 10:49 left to go. Oh, God, what a terrible goal to allow. James Patrick just scored, and we are tied at one here with 9.34 left to go in the first period. Jeff Hackett allows a really bad goal. He was cut outside of his net. Hackett likes to play the puck, but uh, that burnt him on the goal. Come on. Well, not a whole lot going on. Not even a lot of, not even shots. We're having problems. Well, so do, are the waiters. All right, so that's an icing. Let's win this and get a few shots. Well, or not. Okay. Oh, that's a save here by Chris Osgood. Uh, Randy Cunnyworth got a fighting major. Who did you fight? Sean Chambers. Okay. All right, another save by Akit. Oof, we started to get some shots here at the end of the game, uh, end of the period, sorry. Uh, we got 12 shots, they got 12 as well, so... Yep. Not much else to say. Second period's about to start. We are tied at one here in Tampa Bay again between the Lightning and the Waiters. Puck is out of play. Alright, so we are offside. Oh, good save by Osgood there. Oh, I thought it was in. Jeff Sanderson took a slashing penalty, so we are going to have a power play here. Alright, so we're going on the power play with 1620 left to go in the second. How oh, is it icing? Really? Well, that's a bug. They called icing on Artford even though they were killing a penalty. Okay. Um, uh, Artford just scored. Andrew Castles from Chris Bartoloni and Jeff Sanderson. We are down 2-1 to one here in the second period with 13-14 left to go. Come on, we can't drop this game. We need to win here. A long 
long shot, easily handled by Osgood. Look at that. They have their five players in the blue paint. That's some dedicated defense right there. Not sure the goaltender can move very well, but yeah. McGillney stopped on the breakaway. And again, he had a mini breakaway. McGillney is fast. I wish he oh that's a bad goal to allow. So Martin Prochaska scored from Eric Weinrich. We are down three to one in the second period with seven eighteen left to go. Uh, Ackett is uh, Ackett is uh, slightly disappointing so far in this game. Allowed a few stinkers. McGillney stopped in a break on a breakaway again. It's funny. It seems like the only player I can uh, ever get on a breakaway is McGillney. I I can't remember another player that got on a breakaway. It might have happened. I just don't remember it. James Patrick with a tripping penalty, so that's a pretty good opportunity for us to uh, go ahead and reduce the lead here. Uh, we're on the power play for uh, pretty much the remainder of the second period here. Like they like to say, we were on the power play for two minutes or less. Oh, that was offside. Well, we didn't score. All right. Alright, so we took 22 shots, so Osgood is playing really well. He made 21 saves on 22 shots. Uh, Hackett, not so much. Uh, they shot 21 times on him. He's let three in. We are down 3-1 to one heading into the third period here in Tampa Bay against the Waiters. We need a wake-up call during the intermission. Hopefully John Muckler got angry. Maxim Sushinsky with the tripping penalty. I kept you up, and that's how you tank me? Oh my god. You're so selfish. All right. All right, five seconds left to go on their power play. And the power play is over. All right. We need, uh, we need goals, guys. Jason Allison took a hooking penalty, so we are back to killing a penalty again. All right, 15-19 left to go in the third period. We are down two goals, and we... Well, we're down three now. Uh, Andrew Castles just, just scored... Yeah, it doesn't look like we're gonna be winning this game. We're not playing all that well. Uh, Andrew Castles with a slashing penalty. We are going on the power play, so if we want to come back, it needs to start now. Yeah, Aket has let a couple uh, stinkers in. I'm I'm gonna find his uh, Twitter handle and I'm gonna I'm gonna let him know. I'm of course joking. I I don't believe in <laughs> in uh, tracking people online and making their lives miserable for any reason, let alone for a video game. Although some people seem to think that uh, it's uh, normal thing to do 
I'm not sure why somebody would think that, but hey, it is what it is. Sandy Moger got into a fight against um, Bobby Olick. Come on, guys. Ugh. It's a save by Osgood again. Yeah, this game is ju uh, just running away from us. That was some passing there, back and forth. You shoot the puck. No, you shoot the puck. No, you shoot the puck. Go ahead, please, be my guest, shoot the puck. Ah, puck is out of play. 4.40 left to go in the third period. We are down three goals. And Alexander McGinley just took an interference penalty. Hartford's going back on the power play. We clear the puck. Looks like we're going to kill that penalty. Barely. Alright. Come on, come on, come on. All right, so we lost 4-1, so that's not good. All right. So we were outshot 32 to 28 in that game. Uh, Jeff Sanderson was the first star of the game. He had an assist. Martin Prochaska was the second star with a goal, and Andrew Castles was the third star with two goals. 15,959 people in attendance for the game. So, Brian Bradley opened up the scoring short ended. That was his 10th of the season from Mark Bergeron and Sean O'Donnell. That was a 1 0 Tampa Bay game at that point. Then, uh, shortly after, Hartford tied a game. We had the fight between Sean Chambers and Randy Cunningworth. Then Hartford scored twice in the second period, and then they scored again in the third. And we had that fight between Bobby Alec and Sandy Moger. So, yeah, not a good game. Any way you look at it, we lost against a team that's behind us in the standings. Uh, suspension is over for Steve Thomas back in the lineup with the Islanders. There was no stopping Eric Clindrose. He had a hat trick, three goals. Ed Olchuk has racked up 500 assists in his career. Uh, that happened against Calgary. He got an assist. Uh, Ed Olchuk is 30 and he is still a three star player. The Dimitri Yuskevich is back in the lineup after serving his suspension in Calgary. And the players of the Mount are Blaine Laker and Mario Lemieux. Ooh, Blaine Laker, uh, not a regular of the segment for sure. Oh, look at that. Our next opponent is Anaheim. I was wondering how they were doing. Well, they're doing better than the Sharks. Uh, they won four games this month. Both the Sharks and the Mighty Ducks were winless after the first month of the season. So both of them have won some games since uh, it's still not pretty over there. All right, so it is December 1st. So that's where we stop. Uh, Tampa Bay, we are eight in the East. So not great. Um... Uh, Standings are still pretty tight, so, you know, going on a little win winning streak there and things can change pretty quickly. Uh, we're playing for 500, so obviously if we can have a little bit of a better record than 500, we should position ourselves a little bit better than that. Now, in the West, 
Detroit is first, and then Edmonton is doing pretty good. Uh, Colorado, and then Dallas, LA, Chicago, St. Louis, and Phoenix. And the worst team in the league is by far the San Jose Sharks. They have only two wins so far this season after two months. Oh my. Right, so injury wise we still have Boris Mironov that's day to day and Steve Ruchin is one to two months away. Uh, let's take a look at our stats here. I have a feeling that it's gonna look a little bit better. We had a better month this month, so uh, McGilney twenty six points in twenty three games, Mikael Anderson twenty five points in twenty three games, Bradley twenty four points in nineteen, and then Zvela fourteen in twenty three, and then it kind of just goes down from there. Um, yeah, uh, Garen and Allison woke up a little bit. Uh, it was about time. Uh, we're still having some issues, though. All right, so not getting a whole lot of points, per se. Let's take a look at our um, goaltender. Well, our first line is rolling really well. That The first line is all more than a point per game, but the rest is... We're not getting any secondary scoring is how that's called. All right, so Akat not playing all that well. Uh, Abby Wooden is playing pretty good. 9.25 save percentage, uh, almost for uh, GSAA. So that's pr pretty good. GSAA is a goal save above average. So that's pretty good. So he's saving almost four more. He's saved so far almost four more goals than average. So he's doing pretty good. Then let's take a look in the league. Who is the best goal scorer? That's Mario Lemieux. 18 goals. The best passer is Mario Lemieux. 27 assists. The best pointer is obviously Mario Lemieux. 45 assists. Uh, uh, 45 points. Sorry. All right. Oh, we have McGillney that's showing up there. He's 12th uh, in scoring with 26 points. Who knows? Maybe he's going to uh, climb all the way up and win this thing. I don't think so, but it's fun to think that it could happen. Um, Bradley is still pretty good on face-offs. Uh, that's about it. And if I look at goaltenders... <coughs> Um, Alright, so Abibunin is not showing up here in the safe percentage leaders, but yeah, he's pretty good at, uh, in there. The goal save above average, yeah, he's right about the middle there, so that's also pretty good. Alright, so, I mean... Yeah, we need for our secondary scoring to get to get uh, going here that's that's why we're eight if we were getting some secondary scoring i'm ready to bet we would be much higher but you know you can't have you can't be too top heavy in the nhl it usually doesn't work uh, to have like one line and then not much after that because if that one line gets up you're screwed you need some secondary scoring so we're not having it right now and you know we're barely hanging on to a playoff spot so we're gonna go ahead and save the game as usual i do want to thank you for tuning in and if you've liked the video please feel free to like subscribe share comment all of that good stuff and until i roll this game again i'll see you guys next time thank you